Haha, <laughs> I forgot to mention it, sorry. Actually, I've changed the bank account for my paycheck deposit. On payday, I was filled with anxiety because the money from my husband's job hadn't been deposited. Then, to my shock, I found out that my husband had changed the deposit account without telling me. My husband doesn't make much money, and I handle most of our finances. He should know that without his paycheck, we'd be in serious trouble, but he forgot to tell me about such an important change, which made me even angrier. That's when I decided to end our marriage. My name is Megan, and I'm a 31-year-old working wife. I live in an apartment with my husband, John. He is five years older than me. We met at a mixer, and back then, I thought John looked very mature and believed that marrying him would mean he'd take care of me. It was foolish to think that way immediately, but John hiding his debt when we got married was worse. John can't control his desires, if he sees a watch he likes while we're out, he buys it, even if it's $2,000. He almost never has cash, because he spends it all on credit card payments. I'm the man who catches trends early. I haven't paid with cash in 10 years, he used to say. So, for the past decade, he's been living under the burden of credit card debt. When I saw him using his credit card, I thought, what a sophisticated man. Now, I want to scold my past self for thinking that. After we got married, we decided to combine our salaries into one bank account. I thought about giving him an allowance, but John insisted on using his credit card, so I decided on a monthly allowance of $300 for myself. However, I soon realized I couldn't even spend that much every month. $1,000 was being deducted to pay John's credit card bills. It seems he's using a monthly fixed payment plan for his credit card. John's take-home pay is $1,500 and mine is $2,700. After paying $1,000, things get tight. Thinking about the future, I was too scared to spend freely. Yet, John continued to spend recklessly, using his credit card for everything. I was shocked to find out that John's take-home pay was less than what a new hire at my company earns. Before we got married, John told me he worked for a major company, and I believed him, but he hadn't lied completely. He was working part-time at a restaurant owned by a major company. Moreover, he works part-time at an upscale restaurant and is always dressed in a suit. When I saw him in a nice suit after work, I was completely fooled. Even so, he had a $5,000 credit card limit, which seemed absurd. My parents paid for our wedding, so I didn't know how little money John had. We should have talked more, and I should have seen his pay stubs, but it's too late for regrets now. Six months after we got married, my mother-in-law visited us. John usually works on weekends and holidays, so I dealt with her alone. My in-laws are wealthy, my father-in-law runs a company, and my brother-in-law is training to take over. No one says anything about John's freedom, my mother-in-law spoils him. Why are you living in such a cheap apartment, Megan? John shouldn't be living in a place like this, I planned to move into a nice apartment after we got married, but plans changed. I swallowed the words because of your son and forced a smile. This was the apartment I lived in before we got married, and John moved in with me. We had looked at apartments together, and I thought John was handling the lease, but he hadn't. I had already terminated the lease on this place. He found out during our honeymoon that John hadn't signed the lease for the new apartment, and so we hurriedly renewed the lease after returning from the trip. The main reason John didn't sign the lease was, of course, financial. Therefore, I don't deserve to be criticized by my mother-in-law for living in this apartment, but she was not satisfied. Ha, huh, I can't believe our John married such an ordinary woman, she muttered this several times, not addressing anyone in particular, which made my anger grow. So I made a snide remark, well, if John were earning properly, we might be living in a nicer place by now. How dare you speak like that as a wife? You make it sound like our John is to blame. I don't know how much you depend on his income, but it's incredibly rude to interfere with his paycheck the moment you get married. Don't expect a penny from our inheritance, she said. 
Your wealth has nothing to do with me. Are you implying I married for money? I could live on my own, so I certainly didn't marry for money. I married John because I love him, I glared at my mother-in-law, and she glared back at me. Well, we'll see about that. Anyway, don't rely too much on John, he's a sensitive soul. I can't stand the thought of him being henpecked by his wife, with that, she left quickly. It was clear she had come to see John, not to spend time with me. Left alone, I reflected, for a bit. I had told my mother-in-law I married John out of love, but now I wasn't sure if I still loved him. Since we got married, I have discovered many lies, and he's been completely unreliable. He spends money recklessly and still believes he's capable. Once he seemed so cool, but now he just looks like a fool. Can I still say I love him? A year into our marriage, John's paycheck stopped being deposited into our joint account. I suspected he'd quit his job without telling me and was spending his days somewhere else. When he came home that night, I confronted him. Where have you been, huh? At work? Your paycheck hasn't been deposited. Did you quit? Done. Let's surprise for a moment, then started laughing. Haha, <laughs> I forgot to mention it, sorry. Actually, I've changed the bank account for my paycheck deposit. What? Why? I decided to stop living on my credit card. I realized that cash is better. As long as I use my credit card, my debt keeps growing, especially with the interest. I was wasting money, so I want you to pay off the credit card debt. Once it's paid off, there will be no more interest. The more John talked, the angrier I became. How does this benefit me? Once it's paid off, we won't have $1,000 deducted every month. Isn't that great? You should be paying it off. I can't do that. If I did, I don't have $500 to spend each month. So, thanks for handling it. Seeing my rage, John hurriedly left the house. Marrying a man like him was a mistake. I decided to move forward with a divorce immediately. However, I lacked the necessary knowledge at that time. I got a divorce form, filled out my part, and said, John, let's get a divorce. But he refused. Ha, huh, Megan, we can't get a divorce that easily. If we go through mediation, we'll need to discuss it. Unless I agree, a divorce won't happen. If we go to court, the mediator will probably try to persuade us not to divorce. It takes time, and without my agreement, a divorce won't happen. Or do you want to go to court? John left as he spoke. I realized he didn't want to let go of his cash cow. He was comfortable living off my income while spending his entire paycheck on himself. This meant I'd bear all the burden. Not only did he not contribute financially, but he also didn't help with any housework. I think it's wrong that I can't even get a divorce easily. Do I have to continue living like this in despair? I juggled household chores and work. I can't remember the last time I spent money on myself. Before I got married, I had many hobbies and enjoyed my life. Well, John continues to take advantage of me. Just seeing John laughing carefree makes my skin crawl. To avoid seeing John's face, I kept my distance as much as possible. Six months after I first asked for a divorce, my mother-in-law showed up again. It was a weekend, and due to the shift schedule, John was home while I was busy working from home for my job. He had only come to see John. I planned to greet her briefly and then continue with my work. However, when I went to greet her, my mother-in-law suddenly pointed at me and yelled, What do you think of John, huh? What do you mean? I asked. You treated him coldly because he doesn't earn much. My son makes $4,000 a month. How can you, who only make $2,000, criticize him? I glanced at John, who was sweating and looking away. 
It seemed he had lied a lot when complaining about me to his mother, just as he lied to me before we got married. Now, he was deceiving his mother. My mother-in-law kept complaining to defend John. Your job isn't that important, yet you don't even give John an allowance and live lavishly yourself. Lavish, huh? I said, looking at John again, who was signaling me to stay quiet, looking teary-eyed and panicked. Panic turned to terror. He hadn't expected this storm in after he lied and complained about me. That's right. You bossing your husband around is the worst, right John? As soon as my mother-in-law turned to John, he said, yeah, a lazy wife should leave. But as soon as she looked back at me, he apologized silently from behind her. I nodded and said something I didn't mean. All right, I'll leave. I wasn't good enough for John. I'm sorry. I'm glad you understand, but you don't need to leave. Just change your attitude towards John from now on. Yes, I will. I'll be watching to make sure you treat John well. My mother-in-law left, looking satisfied, but inside, I felt a mix of sadness and emptiness. What was the point of me sacrificing myself to pay off John's debts? Tears flowed as I thought about it. Seeing me cry, even John seemed alarmed. Megan, are you okay? Do I look okay? I'm sorry, really. I exaggerated a bit, and my mom misunderstood. If we become a loving couple, she will be reassured. Let's grow together, okay? Haha, <laughs> right. I still have work to do. Don't bother me, I said as I opened my laptop, not to work but to search for a lawyer. I also explained my situation online and sought advice. Various solutions came up. I blame myself for not acting sooner. If I had known, I might have divorced before being yelled at by my mother-in-law, but now I won't be John's pawn anymore. I decided to prepare for a divorce, so to catch John off guard, I acted as if nothing was wrong and continued with my usual routine while John was away. I got quotes from moving companies and found a new place to live. We had been living in this cheap apartment to save up for the wedding, but for just $200 more a month, I could move into a nice apartment. I don't plan on getting remarried anytime soon, and I might even get a pet. Pets are more comforting than being with John. Finally, the long-awaited moving day arrived. Since I had already sent most of my things to the new place bit by bit, the movers only needed to handle the heavy furniture and appliances. I was amazed John hadn't noticed most of my belongings were gone. As I was busy with the move, John, looking confused, approached me. Is something going on? I'm moving out. What? You didn't tell me that. That's because I didn't. You don't need to worry about it. I'm moving out alone. Wait a minute. I can't understand this. There's no need for you to understand. It's none of your business. Oh, and I've already cancelled the lease on this apartment, so you need to move out too. When John finally understood, he clung to me. I'm sorry. It's because I lied, right? I won't lie anymore. Please forgive me. This isn't about forgiveness. How dare you burden me with your debts and lie about having a great job. You lied to your mom too, making me the bad guy. I can't stay married to you. I'll contact a lawyer later. I want a divorce. John just stood in confusion and didn't even try to argue. Then he went somewhere to make a phone call. Whoever he was calling, nothing would change now. Ten minutes later, my mother-in-law arrived. Seeing the movers, she was shocked. Megan, what on earth is going on? I had no desire to explain everything to her since she still seemed ready to blame me. It was clear John hadn't told her the truth yet and I felt no need to explain it myself. I'm moving out. I'm divorcing your son. Please let John tell you about his job, salary, and debts. 
Once you've heard everything, I'd appreciate an apology. What? You're blaming John for everything when it's your fault. I was willing to forgive you if you showed some remorse. Hey, wait! Ignoring her, I saw that the movers had finished. The only things left in the apartment were John's belongings. I took my bags, opened the front door, and said, John, you need to move out by the end of the month. With that, I left. As I drove away, I saw my mother-in-law and John running after the car. They both tripped and fell at the same time. Seeing that, I laughed. After everything they put me through, seeing them stumble was comical. It was the first time I had laughed in a while. From now on, I would live for myself. Later, John explained everything to his mother, and she called to apologize. I'm really sorry. I feel awful for not listening to you, leading to this outcome. Can I have your address to send a proper apology? No, I don't want you to know where I live. It's not all your fault. I should have told you the truth earlier too. Yes, if you had said something sooner, we might not have ended up divorced. I didn't think you'd be on my side. All you would have done is scold, don a bib, and try to reconcile us. Then my mother-in-law changed her tone and snapped back, how dare you? Don't get cocky just because I apologize first. Say, why did you call if you're just going to get mad? There's no need to talk. Goodbye. I hung up and blocked her number. I hired a lawyer and successfully got divorced. The evidence that John didn't contribute to household expenses and had me pay his credit card bills led to a quick divorce, with me getting everything, given that I had shouldered most of the burden until now. I ended up receiving all the assets without any division. John could have received a share of the property, but he didn't. However, John's father, who had never been involved before, was furious with John and ordered him to give me everything as compensation for the trouble caused. Besides that, John's father also transferred the amount I had paid on John's behalf. I didn't expect to get back what I had paid since marital assets are usually shared property. I was grateful for John's father's kindness. John's mother also faced her husband's wrath. She had always pampered John excessively. She was told to live with John in a rundown apartment similar to the one I had lived in before. It seems that living with John helped her understand the stress I went through. When she called me from a payphone, she was crying and apologizing. While I can't forgive her, I hope she experiences the hardship of living with John for a while. As for John, he maxed out his credit cards, leading his mother to ban him from using them. She took control of his salary, giving him only $100 a month as an allowance. Unable to adjust to the sudden change, John borrowed money from payday lenders, sinking deeper into debt. I heard his mother is now ready to give up on him. I feel sorry for the lenders. After moving into a pet-friendly apartment, I got a cute dog. The dog listens well, runs around happily during walks, and gives me good exercise. It feels like I have a little brother, and my life has become much richer. My parents visit my apartment to see the dog, and I've made friends with other dog owners. My days are more fulfilling than I could have imagined during my marriage. For now, I just want to enjoy my happy and fun-filled days. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.